I've been having a bad YouTube day today. I've tried to do this video. This is my third time. But I really want to get this video done because a lot of people are asking about the art cards that I am using and what's on them and um, all that good stuff. I tried to record earlier and um, I didn't have anybody in my chat and it, then all of a sudden it said I wasn't recording and I really was and people were in the chat. I just It said that I had zero in the chat for me. I don't know what was going on. YouTube's having a day. I'm having a day. So this is a live stream that is um, not scheduled. And I'm the reason I'm doing so many live streams is it's so much easier for me to um, do a live stream and um, not have to upload a video to YouTube. Um, when I use my camera, uh, I get an 18 minute video and it takes two hours to upload that video to YouTube. So this way um, I don't have to worry about how long I am on because my camera will turn off after 18 minutes um, and I can um, I don't have to upload the video. So it's a lot easier for me when YouTube actually cooperates with me and tells me that I'm online. Hi Dida. So I'm actually online this time. Because last time I tried to record it I did the whole video and um, it was said I was recording. I did the whole almost the whole video and I looked over and no one had been in the chat the entire time and I looked over and it said that um, I wasn't recording. So Everybody said that I was, but the, but YouTube was telling me I wasn't. Anyway, I would like to get this video out. And um, so that's what I'm doing. I'm going to try to get this whole thing out in one sitting. Uh, I'm going to tell you all the things that are on these cards um, and how I use them. So if anybody else is here, you can say hi, and um, I will know that you're here. So these are my art experiment cards, and um, I use them so that I'm not always doing the same things. It's more of a random kind of thing because I will shuffle the cards and deal myself um, a, a certain amount and do what it tells me on the cards. Hi, Caroline. So I guess this stream is okay, and, and I'm actually recording this time. <laughs> So, um, we'll just go through these cards real fast. I don't want to make a real long video, but I want to get that out there. Um, so let's get to that, and then I can show you kind of how I, I use these, these cards. So, I'm going to start with um, acrylic paint. Almost everybody has acrylic paint. And um, you can do so much with it. So the first one is acrylic paint. Um, use a paintbrush. Uh, you can do anything you want to do. Um, you can use a paintbrush and cover the entire page with a single color or with three different colors. Or you can use a brush and just put a little bit of color on. Um, however you want to interpret your cards, that's up to you. Um, if you want more information on your cards, um, that's up to you. So that's my first one is acrylic paint with a paintbrush. Second one is acrylic paint with a scrape with a credit card. Um, and we all know how to do that. You just put, um, you can put paint directly on the page or you can put it on a palette and um, you just scrape it um, with a credit card or um, any flat card. I have quite a few going have paint on them. Obviously I've done that once or twice. Um, easy, easy. Acrylic paint um, with a brayer. Um, this one is you put the paint on a palette of some sort, uh, a flat surface. I like to use a piece of plastic. And you use your brayer and you fill up your, your paint 
on your brayer and put it on your page. And the next one is you can drop the paint directly on your page and use a brayer to spread out that paint. Um, you can do either one. So I have both of them so that I will remember to do both of them. Acrylic paint using a sponge. Now that can be a kitchen sponge, um, a natural sponge, it can be a makeup sponge, any kind of sponge. And I'm not put use three different colors or use two different colors. Um, I'm kind of leaving that up to what I feel like doing when I come across the card. So um, if you need to tell yourself to use two colors or use three colors um, or use red or whatever, you put that on your card. The next one is use a chopstick. Now I have a ton of chopsticks um, that I use quite a bit. Um, and I just take a bottle of paint, I take off the lid, dip the chopstick into the paint and kind of scrape off a little bit of it. And then I take what's on that chopstick and kind of rub it on the page. Um, I'm not doing all of it right now. Um, I'm trying to do this quickly and I do have videos out um, for the acrylic paint experiments. I think it's called um, acrylic paint art experiments um, so that you can see um, demonstrations on all, all of these. Most of these, I think, are on there. So use a chopstick. Um, acrylic paint, drop the paint onto the paper. Use another piece of paper and put that on top kind of um, burnish it a little bit. I'll demonstrate this one just because I'm having a hard time. I'm having a day today and I don't know if I'm making myself very clear. So um, drop a little bit of paint on your page and I'm going to use two different colors so you can kind of see. Try to get just a little bit So drop some color onto your page, take another piece of paper, and you can use a brayer or your hand or whatever and smush that out. And you can keep going until you've got a pretty thin layer of paint. And that's all that means. It's just a, a really easy way to, to get some color on your pages. And you can keep going until there's no more wet paint to spread around. So that's that one. And I have it written down here, acrylic paint. Drop paint on paper. Place another paper on top. Rub and remove. So that's all that says. Um, acrylic paint using the foam brush. You can just um, use it as a brush. I like to dip the tip of the foam brush into a palette full of paint and I like to do the circles. You've seen me do that on other videos. I like, I like foam brush circles. Um, acrylic paint using um, a baby wipe. I like to use baby wipes because um, they're moist already. Um, what color should I use? Use this purple. And you can drop the paint directly on the paper, or you can drop a little bit directly on the baby wipe, or from a palette even. You can just pick it up from a palette. And I must be running out of this purple because it's really hard to come out of the bottle. Come on. Thank you. <laughs> Getting paint everywhere. So I can take that paint on my wet baby wipe and smush it around and I can keep it thick or I can do a really thin layer and just rub it in and it kind of makes it translucent a little bit. If this dries, it'll be a little bit more opaque. Depends on how thick you want your paint. And it's just a nice way to put a nice layer of paint on your page. Baby wipes are real easy to use. And then I can clean off my fingers. Okay, so that's a baby wipe. Um, acrylic paint using a makeup sponge through a stencil. We've all seen that. We all know how to do that. And if you're not, then um, you can watch the video. 
because it's on that one. I'm sure it is. Acrylic paint using a soft brush um, through a stencil. I'm not going to demonstrate because I'm, I'm making all kinds of messes here. Um, but this is what I'm talking about. Um, I used a stencil with a flat brush that's fairly soft. And this is the stencil that I used. And I just took a bunch of paint and just really pushed that paint underneath the stencil. And um, that's what causes these designs to come up. So I really, I really like that. Um, I use that one a lot. So um, it's fun. It's fun to watch what comes up underneath the stencil. I've got paint everywhere. I'm getting paint all over these cards. Okay, so that's soft brush through a stencil. Um, acrylic paint on a piece of plastic. Now that can be um, a hard piece of plastic or it could be like a Ziploc bag or something. It's the same kind of principle as putting it on a piece of paper. Put uh, some color on a piece of plastic. And then, um, I don't know if I've got my plastic handy. I don't. Just put it on a piece of plastic and you can put your paper over that plastic and, and rub the color onto your page. Um, I don't use that one very often. Acrylic paint using random objects like lids, cups, or cardboard, um, anything that has that, that would make a shape or a mark. Um, you put acrylic paint on your um, palette dip your object in the paint and then put it on your paper. Um, acrylic paint. Drop the paint on your paper and drag a comb or a texture tool, something that's got ridges through the paint and it makes kind of lines. It gives, um, it gives the paint some texture. For that one I really I like to drop the paint in fairly large blobs so that I have a, a lot of paint to drag the comb through. It, it, it makes some interesting marks. Um, the acrylic paint spray, and I've shown this on a video as well. I will put, I get the little Mr. Bottles. Um, you can get these at the dollar store. I haven't found any at my dollar store, but um, you can get the Mr. Bottles. I think they're at uh, Walmart as well. Put a little bit of acrylic paint in. I like to use the metallics because it shines um, and then add a, a half water um, make it really runny so that it's really kinda it's very 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 watery and it, it'll spray through the bottle don't use um, glitter paints because that glitter will get caught in your nozzles and that's no fun to have to clean those out so acrylic paint spray is a nice one. If you want to make homemade sprays, that's an easy and cheap way to do it. Um, and I like doing that. So then we get to the collage prompts. This one is um, tissue paper, painted, stenciled, or printed tissue paper. Just about any kind of tissue paper. So collage some tissue paper on your page. Um, collage any paper with a stenciled pattern. Um, I have been known to go through you know and just do some random stenciling on paper. Um, I like to use those pieces of paper for collage so that's what that one is. Collage envelope pieces. Um, security envelopes have a great pattern inside them. Um, sometimes they're a great color. Um, I will use those for bits of collage. Um, collage scraps of painted paper. So um, any leftover, anything that you've got some paint on, you can collage that. Collage scraps of scrapbook paper. We all have scrapbook um, scraps to use. This one is collage. It's washi tape. So I can put a few pieces or a lot of pieces of washi tape on my page. Collage embossed image. Um, I will spend a day just doing embossing. Um, I'll do uh, embossed patterns or you know image stamps or whatever, different colors, some glitter ones, and all kinds of stuff. 
and um, I put them all together in a little like a box top or something so I have a bunch I don't have any right now I need to do that um, so I have a bunch of just little embossed images to use in collage so that's one of them um, collage stamp tissue paper where I will take any kind of stamps and just randomly um, stamp on tissue paper um, I have a whole basket full of tissue paper some of it's stamped some of it's painted um, some of it is, just has patterns on it um, that's what that one is and this one is just collage torn tissue so any kind of tissue at all collage magazine pictures is this car and I keep a basket full of random magazine pictures that I don't know what I'm going to use it for. Um, sometimes it's stuff on the back of a page that I've cut out um, and thought that it was kind of interesting, like that was on the back of something else. And I thought I might as well throw it in here. I might use it for something. Um, just random bits of color, texture. Um, not really whole bits of anything just to have some stuff to collage um, so that's what that one is just um, just random little bits that I put together so I have things together when I want to do um, magazine pictures um, collage text text can be book pages junk mail um, it can be handwritten letters you can scan handwritten letters so you don't have to use the original letters um, and rip those apart and just use them as little collage bits. Um, and then we get into the dye ink pads. I'm talking about um, the Distress Inks, um, Adirondack, those are two of the, the, the brands that I have. I'm sure there's other ones out there. They are dye ink pads. They are not permanent. So if you put water on these, the color will move. Um, just so I know that I'm still here, and somebody say hi to me in the chat so I know things are still uh, going okay. I've been having so much trouble, I just want to make sure I don't have to do this for a fourth time. So this is the dye ink pads that I am talking about in these next cards. Um, and I do have a video um, showing most of these techniques still here. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you, Dida. <laughs> just making sure. I just don't want to do this all over again. Um, these um, dye ink pads, they are not permanent. Um, they will move with water. So um, if you're planning on putting um, any kind of glue or anything over them, and you've stamped an image with them, um, be aware that they will, um, the, the, the color will move. It won't be um, as, um, it won't be exactly how you put it down there. So just so you know. So um, the one thing that I like to do with um, dye inks, um, I like to make a pool of color and that's, and I put some color down on, uh, this is a plastic mat, you can do it on a craft mat, you can do it on a piece of plastic like a Ziploc bag or something kind of like that. Um, spritz it with water. I use um, something that I got from the dollar store. I use this for everything. It's just a, um, it's a body spray is what it is. Um, and it's just a mister. Um, I, I took the body spray out, I used it and um, cleaned it out and just put plain water in here. So, and it's big, so I, I don't run out within my project. So I missed my, my ink, and then I just put my paper down over to pick up the color, and um, that's how that works. So I make a lot of different pools of color to do a lot of different stuff. And the next one is make a pool of color and um, use a stamp and stamp into that, which makes a very runny, not very clear stamp, but it gives you some great textures. 
because there's so much water to it. Um, and it's kind of, it thins out that, that um, color a little bit. So I, I, I like the way that looks. I don't necessarily want all my stamps to be perfect. Um, I want them to be random and interesting and kind of different. I'll clean up my mess here. So that's that one. And then the fun foam. You've all seen me use the fun foam. You put the color on it. I can do it one real fast because I really like doing this. Put some color on it. Spritz it. And stamp it down. I love doing that. You find this fun foam in the kids section at Joann's. I'm sure all the other kids sections have it too. Um, that's where I found this one. Um, it came in a pack of four different four different flavors. So there's some other ones. One has lines, one has polka dots. So I like that one. Fun foam is great. Um, the dye inks again rub the ink pad over a stencil. Now I don't know if I've shown this one. So this is a soft brush. And I'll use that paper. And I get a stencil out here. And what I'm doing is I'm loading the stencil with all kinds of color. Just rubbing that ink pad right on the stencil. You don't get it on, a, you get a little bit, but not really on the page that you're getting. But you get your, your brush damp. See if I can just get it damp and not too wet. Damp brush. And you actually brush that color off the stencil. Depends on how wet your brush is, how um, clear the stencil is. But that's how you get the color off that stencil. And it's an easy way to do it. Um, you know, the other way is just to use a makeup sponge. I think I've got that in here too. So that's that one. Um, the other one that you can do is um, stamp the image. And I don't know why I'm showing all these. I do have a video. On, it's called Art Experiments um, Dye Ink Pads, I think. Spritz it and then stamp with it. It gives a bleedy kind of look as well. Um, it's a little bit different than the other one, but still, it still works. Kind of the same, but kind of different. The ink smushing, I've shown that many times. Just get a piece of packaging out, a large piece of plastic. Um, put your color. Is this color going? It's your color. It's not showing. Choose one that shows. Put your color on the plastic. Spritz it. And I'm going to use this other corner right here. Turn it over and smush that color on the page. Real easy to do. It's a random way to put color on your page. Um, I use that one a lot, a lot. I really like the randomness that that gives. It's kind of like a watercolor effect. So that's ink smushing. Um, another thing you can do with a foam or stamp is, um, I'll use a stamp. You can um, load it with color, a lot of color, and spritz it so that it drips. And then leave that to dry so you've got some cool little drips on, on your page. So dripping is good. 
the dye inks again. Um, this one is you make a pool of color. And I tried to show this one before. I don't know if it's on the video. Get it real wet. And we'll use a different piece of paper so you can see. One piece of paper. Thank you. And get it on the edge or something. And watch that color drip. You can move it around and make it go in different places. Do it again for more drips. You can do this with acrylic paint. Um, you can do it a few times to get some good color. But paint dripping is fun. So that's paint dripping. And I'm getting ink everywhere. I'm going to leave that for just a second. And I'm going to use this other piece of this. Um, the next card is wax crayons. And you get a wax crayon, just a regular crayon. Um, actually, I want a light one. And I have no light ones out of their packages where I can get to it. Anybody else here? Well, I'm struggling with these crayons. I don't know you're here unless you say hello. So I am going to use this stamp and do a rubbing of a stamp. Usually I use the flat side of crayon, but I can't get to my crayons at this moment, so I'm just kind of winging it. I'm winging it. So that is a rubbing, and then I like to dip it into a pool of ink. The wax crayons act like a resist, so that you don't get, I got too much wax. You can usually see some of the inks going through um, where I didn't stamp or didn't r make it the rubbing. So you can see where the wax kind of resists it. Still here, still here. This looks good. Finally getting somewhere, you guys. Get this video up so you guys can start your cards. Okay, so that is wax crayons. Make a rubbing and then dip it into the, the ink. Um, a dye ink pad using um, the felt. You, We all have seen um, these tools by Tim Holtz. Um, I bought these quite a few years ago, so I still have them. I just buy new pieces of felt to use on them. And, you know, they're, they're one of those... Yeah, you take some of the color and you rub it onto the page. Um, I don't do it the way you're supposed to. You're supposed to stop, start off the page so that it makes an even more even coat. But I like the way it kind of looks kind of weird. So I don't do it the way you're supposed to. But that's just using the felt to apply the color. Um, you can do this. Um, with a makeup sponge through a stencil. Um, we all have seen that. I'm, sh I'm sure it's on my, my video. So that's all with the dye ink pads. My next card is Scribble. Um, you can scribble with anything, you know, gel pens or regular pens or um, pencil or whatever, um, colored pencils. Um, I left myself really wide open so that I could choose whatever I wanted to at the time. Um, just scribble. You can um, choose a certain amount of time to scribble or, you know, whatever. So now we're getting into um, watercolors. Um, 
I don't have any videos on the watercolor techniques that I have on these cards, but they're pretty simple. Um, I use watercolor um, in the tubes sometimes because I have them. I also have the cheap kids watercolor sets. Those work just as well. Um, this card says randomly um, apply watercolors and let the colors bleed into each other. The next one is watercolor. Apply one color, dry that color, and then add a second color. Um, the watercolor, apply a, a lot of water to the watercolor and put it on the side of your page, kind of like we did here, and tip your page to let that color drip. Um, watercolor crayons, um, scribble um, watercolor crayons and use a damp brush to blend the colors in on your page. Um, another water watercolor crayons, make a rubbing kind of like that um, and then just spritz it with some water just to soften the edges. Watercolor crayons again. Um, draw circles or lines and then spray ink on top of those. Watercolor, um, brush on a light color like a uh, make a color wash and then drop uh, some dark, dark color droplets on top of it while it's still wet. It makes a interesting, an interesting kind of effect. Watercolor crayons draw thick lines or circles and use your finger to blend them. Here's an acrylic paint. Um, I have two of these because um, I really like this is use the soft brush with the stencil um, to push the paint under the stencil. I really like that technique so I have two cards so I'll come across it more often. <laughs> so that is a duplicate. Um, wax crayons and I kind of showed how to do the the wax crayons um, you can do watercolors over you can do the inks over you can do um, acrylic wash over um, crayons that's that's that one handmade or found stamps um, way I have a whole couple of videos I think on how to make some stamps so that's reminding me to use those stamps um, spray inks. I have a few spray inks, not very many, um, and I forget to use them. So this card reminds me to random spray some spray ink. And this is a handmade or found stencil with an ink pad of some sort. It could be a permanent ink pad or one of my dye ink pads, just an ink pad. Here's an acrylic paint scrape with the credit card. Um, spray ink through a stencil and I really like to stencil so I made an extra um, stencil card just do a stencil use a stencil any way you want to um, I don't ha I didn't have enough I didn't feel like I had enough stencil cards in my deck so I wanted to make another one so that I would come across them more often so this one kind of gives me free reign to, to do any kind of stenciling that I want to do. The spray ink, um, it's kind of like this one where you just spray ink uh, on, a, on a side of the paper and tilt it and let it create drips. And then this one is um, the non-waterproof pen. It's my crazy lady circles. You've seen me do it. Um, I make the circles with a non-waterproof pen. Um, and then I spritz it with water to watch those circles bleed. So that is my deck of cards. And the reason that I've used um, or I've written down these particular um, prompts is this, this is what I have. I have watercolors. I have acrylic paint. I have watercolor crayons. I have wax crayons. I have a few spray paints. Um, I have used and um, written down techniques for items that I actually have. Um, if you do not have acrylic paints, um, write down prompts of something else. Um, write down, you know, if you've got oil pastels, I don't have those, I don't use them. 
So um, use what you've got. Uh, if you need to be reminded to use um, your stamps, you know, write a couple of cards saying use your stamps. Um, and then this is what I do. Um, I will um, shuffle them all up and to make random little bits. Um, I usually color a piece of paper and then stencil over that color. Uh, and I tend to do that over and over and over again. So most of my pages look kind of the same after a while. Um, and so these cards kind of, um, they get me to do random things in random orders. So I'm not always doing the same things. And also what it does is it keeps me from thinking too much. So I can sit down and deal myself a few cards. I can decide how many cards. And um, I don't have to think about what to do next or, or you know what would look good with that. Um, the cards are telling me what to do. So um, I like the random little bits that, that happen when using the cards and not to thinking about it. So shuffling them up, I've got acrylic paint with a foam brush, spray inks through a stencil, scrape acrylic with a credit card, and what I would do is I would probably deal myself maybe seven cards, and then I would go in order and do what the card told me to do until I had a nice little background. Um, so those were the first three, and then another acrylic paint, drop on the paper, and drag a texture tool through it. Here's a dye ink um, with the fun foam on top of that. Another acrylic, I didn't, I didn't um, shuffle these very well. Another acry acrylic paint where you drop it on the paper and lay another paper on top. And then another dye ink. Um, create a pool and, and make drips. So by the end of all that, you've got a page that has all kinds of different different things that you did not know that you were going to do. It's random. It, it's a nice way to mix things up a little bit and get something different going on. You don't have to think about it. Um, the other thing is when you're watching somebody creating pages and they do some kind of technique that um, you want to try, write it down. You don't have to use cards for all these prompts. Um, I just happen to have a bunch of extra cards that I, you know, I was making artist trading cards and I had a bunch of extra cards I was going to use and didn't. So that's the reason I've used the cards. I like cards. I like to shuffle cards. You can put all these prompts you know, on a little piece of paper, fold it up and put it in a jar, um, a big fishbowl or something, um, depending on how many you've got. And you can pull out your prompts um, in, in some kind of order to create your pages. You, you know, you don't have to have anything fancy like cards or anything. You can just do anything randomly like, like a jar, pull it out of a jar. So, um, and that's the reason that I use them um, when, I'm, when I'm not sure what to do. It gives me um, some ideas on, on what to do. Um, and I really do like using them and not thinking about it too much. I can sit there and play and, and um, I don't have to think. I can just do whatever it tells me and it's fun. Um, another one that I've started doing, I have um, another deck of cards that I've started. I haven't really done anything with them yet. Um, these are happen to be red. Uh, I thought they were the same color, but they're red, which is okay because I'm going to use these for um, details. After I get um, backgrounds done with all these cards, then I can come to these cards, and this one is doodle outline elements on a page. So when I've got some, some stuff on there, maybe collage down some magazine pictures or some focal images of some sort, 
um, doodle on the outline the elements on the page. Um, doodle, use a paint pen, add dots along the edge of some of your elements. Doodle, make loose circles randomly on your page. Here's another doodle, make loose circles ma using white. It could be a pencil, it could be a paint pen, um, anything white. Here's another doodle, make cross cross hatches or X's randomly on the page. Um, here's add numbers. You can add one number, you could add three numbers, um, whatever. These are just some interesting little details to put on top um, to make your pages different. This one is add one or more wings. It can be butterfly wings, it could be um, dragonfly wings, fairy wings, um, and it wouldn't have to necessarily be a person. You could put wings on a house. Um, this would just give you a prompt to do something that you wouldn't think about putting on your page. Um, again, things that you're not thinking about um, completely random. So this one is add a hat. And you can put a hat on a house. That's different and makes you laugh. Um, add a square. Now that could be adding a piece of square paper or it could be um, drawing a square on your paper. Um, you can interpret these just any way you want. This one's add a crown. Again, just, you know, even if it's, you don't have a person on your a person or an animal or something, just put a crown on your focal point. Uh, um, make it interesting. Add an eye. I have two add an eyes. Obviously I like to add eye. I did this earlier today. Did it too fast. Add one or more letters. I said add letters, but I meant to put one or more letters. Add a hand. Add a face. Um, another one that I'm going to do is add a postage stamp. Um, just little details uh, that that make your pages different um, that you wouldn't necessarily think of. If you come up with something, you know, randomly doodle and add little bits, um, it makes your pages um, fun and interesting and completely random. Um, you you get that image of what you want to make out of your head. And when you start, you have no idea where you're going to end up. And that's what makes the whole process of this art experiment, it, it makes it fun when you don't know what you're going to end up with. So that is the cards that I am using right now. Um, I do plan on adding some more cards. I, I've gotten some more, some more stuff. I did get a couple of Delusions paints. I splurged a little bit. I have a couple Inca Golds. So I will be making cards to remind myself to use those. Um, and so that's what I would suggest. Use prompts. Um, pull out what you have and make a, yourself a little prompt to remind you of all the things that you have that you want to use and mix it up a little bit. So that is that. Um, and I'm going to keep this fairly short. Uh, we've been on for 43 minutes. So um, at least we have all the cards all put together. And um, that is the list of all the cards that are that I'm working with at the moment. Like I said, I will be adding to this I'll probably have three decks going by the end of all this, um, but I do enjoy making doing things with the cards. So thank everybody for being here. I only have seen two people chatting, um, but I am going to stop this live stream for now. Um, I may come back in just a little bit to play in my art journal a little bit now that I've got these cards all out and. I kind of want to play, so I might come back and, and do a little pl bit of playing. So um, thanks for watching. Thanks everybody for coming and being here. <laughs>